St. Luke chapter 4, verses 38 through 44. St. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. After leaving the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever. And they asked Jesus about her. Then he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her immediately. She got up and began to serve them. As the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to Jesus, and he laid his hands on each of them and healed them. Demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Messiah. At daybreak, he departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowds were looking for him. And when they reached him, they tried to prevent him from leaving. But he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to other cities also. For I was sent for this purpose, and he continued proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And Jesus entered into one of the ships which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord, for he was astonished. And all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken, and so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. We are continuing with our series of sermons, Building Tomorrow's Success Despite Yesterday's Failure. We want to lift up verses 4 and 5 of Luke chapter 5. Now, when Jesus had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out 
into the deep and let down your nets. Now that's N E T S for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. That's spelled N E T. Hmm. And so as we observe the setting in which the Lord Jesus Christ creates an atmosphere for tactile learning, experiential growth for these new disciples. Jesus is coming fresh from a failure at Nazareth. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ shut down the ministry at Nazareth. And in shutting it down, he moved his administrative core to a totally different city. This is in keeping with the Lord Jesus Christ saying to the disciples, when you go and preach in a city, if they refuse you, then what you do is shake off the dust of your feet as a testimony against that city. Because if they refuse you, they refuse me. And if they refuse me, it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that city that rejected the kingdom of God. Jesus shut down the ministry and moved to a totally different ministry headquarters. For there are times when the Lord favors and blesses not just certain people, but certain places. And when God wants you to be in a certain place, he will take whatever means are necessary to move you into the right place to be blessed. Hello? And even if you are ever so gifted and talented and anointed, if you are not where God has appointed you to be, then the blessings and anointing and favor that should be flowing into your life are waiting for you to move to the right address. And sometimes it takes extreme measures for God to get you out of one place into the right place for you to be blessed. I wonder if there's anybody here who can just look at somebody and tell them, I know I'm in the right place to be blessed. Now you understand how deeply personal this was for Jesus to have to change ministry headquarters because Obviously, he wanted to be in Nazareth. He wanted to be where his mother was. He wanted to be where his brothers and sisters were. He wanted to be used by God in the place where he had matured and grown up. But the fact of the matter is, his mother wasn't with him I dare you to shout run down the aisle on that his brothers and sisters were not with him and sometimes in order for God to use you he might have to get you away from ungodly family folk so that the anointing of God can freely flow in your life yes I'm uh, Dr. Felton, I'm getting ready to get up in somebody's Kool-Aid. 
Sometimes the folk that you want to be around are not with you and don't support you and can't get with you and yet God has a calling on your life. That's how we got started as a Judeo-Christian heritage. God called a man named Abram and he said, Abram, get out! Don't ask any questions and don't ask opinions and don't wonder if people are going to go with you because the calling is on you and I can't bless you until you get out from that ungodly place where you are and don't just get out Genesis 12 and 1 says now the Lord said get out don't waste God's time don't put God on hold when God says move then you need to go ahead and move and God could not and did not bless Abram until he changed locations. Now, I know you got money where you are. And I know that you have a good business where you are. I know that you are a member of the Chamber of Commerce. I know that you are part of the Fortune 500. But that's not where I want you to be. I've got something better for you than money. I've got something better for you than positions. I've got something better for you than offices. If you really want to be blessed, you're going to have to make a choice. You can stay where you are with them few little nickels you got, or you can move and I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. You don't have room to receive. Yes. Abram was already wealthy. He's already rich. But when God moved upon him to get out of Ur of the Chaldees in Mesopotamia between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, I'm not even going to tell you the address for them to forward the mail. You just start moving. Walk by faith. And as you move, I'll point you in the right direction. And because you're obeying me, I will bless you. Make your name great. You're barren right now. Can't even have a child. But if you move when I tell you to move, if you can count the grains of sand by the seashore, you can count the way that I'll bless you. If you can count the stars in the heavens, you count the way I'll multiply. You got to move when God says move. I hope this ain't too heavy for you today. In fact, you need some meat anyway. Hello? Yes, God impressed upon Jesus Christ. I don't want you to be in the town where mama is. You got to break with your mama. You got to break with your sisters and brothers. If you're going to be a prophet, a prophet is without honor. Where? In his own mama's house. And in his own country. And so Jesus had to follow the leading of the spirit that goes against the grain. He had to fail in his hometown. Yeah. He had to shut down the mission where mama was and his brother. Let go of mama's dress tails and go out there and let your ministry take root in the right location. Jesus then moves from Nazareth to Capernaum. And as soon as he got to Capernaum, the enemy doubled his attacks against Jesus. He went to the synagogue in Capernaum, and as soon as he walks in, a demon confronts, I know you, Jesus of Nazareth, son of David. I know you just moved here from Nazareth. I don't want you here. And Jesus rebuked that demon and silenced him right on the spot. I want you to understand new levels, new devils. And that means that the synagogue at Capernaum had never challenged this demon. He was in office, he was in position, but he had never been challenged. He had a place where he could relax and be at ease and had never been 
challenged. And I'm wondering how many demons in your life you have never even challenged. Wonder how many ungodly demonic strongholds in your life that you haven't even challenged. How long will you let demons breathe down your neck and dare you to live for God in your own house? Hello? Oh, it's getting a little deep up in here today. And when Jesus comes into that synagogue and the Spirit of God places his sanction upon it, the word went out. As surely as he was rejected in his former headquarters, when he moved to his new headquarters, the word went out. The countryside came. People in the village came. They came from far and near because God had planted Jesus in Capernaum. He went to Simon's house and his mother-in-law was literally out of her mind with a high fever. Jesus, knowing that when you invade enemy territory, you have to bring kingdom dominion with you. He brought salvation into the house. He brought healing and deliverance into the house. When the sun set, people had come from all around. Look at the contrast. Run out of town in one location. Received by everybody in the countryside in another. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. And then after having ministered into the night, the Bible says at daybreak, Jesus moves into a deserted place. The people come looking for him. But Jesus' mission was to continue to share the good news of the kingdom. Luke 5 and 1 says, the people began to press upon Jesus to hear the word of God. You've got to understand that when God calls you to fulfill his kingdom purpose, even when it seems that you have hit rock bottom, deep personal disagreements, team failures, don't forget that when God is in you and for you and his hand of favor is on your life, God will set you up. Psalm 27 says he'll set you up on a rock. And sometimes in order to set you up, he has to let you experience failure and rejection in one place so that he can groom you for overwhelming acceptance in another. I wish I had some help. I know it's going to be a little heavy. Jesus, the Bible says, was standing by the lake of Gennesaret and people just began to press upon him, pushing their way into the kingdom just to hear word from God. Jesus then asked Simon, let me use your boat. I need a pulpit today and I need to bring the Lord's day on a weekday. It's not the Sabbath. It's not a Sunday morning. But I need the kingdom of God to show up today. Sometime God will show up at your job. Sometime God will show up in your entrepreneurial endeavor. Who would have thought on last Monday night that the star of the game would be God? The whole nation is tuned in because these two teams have a long-standing rivalry and the Cincinnati Bengals have home field advantage as well as momentum. Buffalo's already been through the ringer, had two snowstorms that paralyzed the city, had a racist shooting back in the summer where white racists came and shut up the grocery store and said, I did it, I plead guilty. I shot them just because they were black. The whole city is wounded and scarred and broken. And when they got on the field, Damar Hamlin made a tackle, stood up, and snatched back down was he. 
Who would have thought that as we attended a football game, a prayer meeting would break out? God can show up at your job. God can show up at your place of business. God can show up in your neighborhood. A prayer meeting broke out. And I'm not talking about no Pharisee prayer. I'm not talking about no stuck up nose in the air prayer. They didn't stand and pray. They got down on their knees, gathered around their brother, and began to call on God. If a football player can play in a football field, why can't you pray up in church? Hello? Every now and then, God needs to show up on your turf. Yes, it's good to come to church. It's right to come to church. I was glad when they said it to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But this thing ought to work both ways. If you can come to God's house, he ought to be welcome up in your house. And if he's not welcome yet, he's going to find a way to get up inside. God moves in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform, plants his footsteps on the seas, rides on the storm. God knows how to get in. He knows how to shut a game down. He knows how to shut a city down. He knows how to shut a nation down. He's got the whole world in his hand. Why don't you give him some praise since he's in control? Hallelujah. Jesus showed up at the workplace. And when he shows up at the workplace, he preaches the kingdom on the spot. Jesus fearlessly, unapologetically preaches the kingdom, not in the synagogue. You need to learn this about Jesus. The synagogue was the place of opposition to Christ. Whenever he went to the synagogue or to the temple, the enemy tried to stop him, oppose him, shut him down. But if I go out into the highways and hedges, if I walk along the seashore, if I go where people are broken and hungry and sick and diseased, they have a better response to the kingdom than folk that say they are the servants of God. It's a strange thing when you walk up in a church and nobody says good morning. Nobody says welcome. Nobody says how you doing? Come on in here. Something wrong with that church. Hello? Jesus says by this shall all men know that you are my disciples by the love you have one to another. Be careful if you don't miss heaven because you're too stuck up, too proud to enter your titles, your position. God don't care how you dress because you ain't gonna never outdress God. He dresses in glory, honor, majesty, dominion, and power. He's glorious. He's beautiful. Have you seen Jesus lately? He's fairer than 10,000 thousand angels why don't you give him some praise do you really love him <laughs> Jesus received a greater response in an inconvenient location sometimes you just got to move I know what I'm talking about because I don't like moving, but I've had to do it. And the fact of the matter is, the old folk were right. You may be high, you may be low, you may be rich, you may be poor, but when the Lord gets ready, you got to move. Jesus brought the kingdom to the world. Some people would never come into your church. We found that out during the pandemic. We were able to touch and win souls who passed by the building for years. But when we got out even in the ice, in the cold, in the snowstorm, and began lifting up Jesus, people start coming to us saying, pray for me. I heard the message. I heard the praise. I felt the presence of God. Sometimes you got to get out of the box. Get out of your same seating situation. Get out of the place where you take a nap and move into a place where God can be glorified through your witness. Has that ever happened to anybody? 
Jesus preached from the boat, having just come off a of ministry failure. He then confronts another failure. We read these verses and place emphasis upon them. Luke chapter 5, verse 4, when Jesus finished ministering to the masses, he gives a command to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your what? Nets, plural, more than one. N-E-T-S for drought. But look at Simon's response. Jesus is giving him an opportunity to build today's miraculous turnaround and success. And Simon is still stuck in yesterday's miserable failure. He says to Jesus, I have a right to be groggy and upset. I have a right to be miserable today because I've been working all night. We've been fishing and toiling all night. We have failed. We've taken nothing. But if you insist, nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net, which means I'm going to stop you from talking to me. I'm going to hush your mouth. I'll let down one net. Jesus didn't ask him to let down one net. He said, let down your nets because I'm getting ready to prosper you. I'm getting ready to open up the windows. I'm getting ready to break the nets with success. I'm getting ready to sink your boat if you ain't too stuck on the failures of yesterday. Let me just level with you today. God can't bless you if you don't want to be blessed. God can't grow you if you don't want to grow. God can't anoint you if you don't want to be anointed. God cannot prosper your life, your family, unless you submit your purpose, your life, your will into the hands of God. You've got to find a real yes, Lord. Not a I want to shut you up. I want to get you off my back. Not I'm going to give you one minute so I can get you to hush. No, expect a miracle. Expect God to move in your life. Expect God to defeat your enemies. Expect overflow. Why don't you look at somebody and ask them, are you expecting a miracle? Come on, look at somebody else and ask them, are you expecting a miracle? Jesus has to push this. Help me out, Brother Mike. Technician, help me out. Bring me back up. Thank you, Brother Technician. Jesus has to impose success upon this brother because his mindset is disobedience, pride, arrogance, selfishness. Jesus is ready to move him forth in the blessing, but he's holding on to failure. Some people grip failure. They got a death grip on failure. Your attitude can kill you. Your disposition can knock you out. It doesn't matter what you think you bring to the table Jesus said without me you can do nothing what Simon was trying to tell Jesus you don't even know what you're talking about this is my boat this is my business you might be good at preaching and laying hands on the sick but I know the fishing business and I'm gonna let down one net and that's why God had to bring the kingdom and force it on the spot. You clown with God, he knows how to out clown you, baby. What did I tell you to do? I told you let down the nets. But because you don't want to be blessed, because you're too stubborn, you're looking back because you're filled with a sense of rebellion and witchcraft and disobedience. I can't bless you like I want to bless you because you can't stand to be blessed. Hello? Come on, help me with look at somebody and ask them, can you stand to be blessed? 
Can you stand to be anointed? Can you stand God's revelation upon your life? Can you stand to God to promote you? Can you stand for God to take you higher? Or are you too bent on the past and too set in your ways to let go and let God? I want to bless you, but you can't stand to be blessed. But I'm going to prove God's kingdom authority anyway. I'm going to demonstrate that God's purpose and power is present anyway. Get out of the shore. Get out of your comfort zone. Move into the deep. If you want to catch the big fish, move into deeper waters. That means that you got to go into kingdom fishing. Too many people are church fishing. Jesus wants you to understand what it means to be a kingdom fisher. You're not fishing for districts, jurisdictions, denomination. You want something bigger than that. God wants to give you the kingdom, but you don't want it. You want the district. He's trying to give you the kingdom. You want something on this side of the track. He's trying to give you the kingdom. You want a buddyhood. You want to be comfortable where you are. God's got something bigger for you. He wants to bless you, but can you stand to be blessed? Jesus had to force the issue. Get out. Just like I said it to Abram, I'm saying it to you. Get out into the deep. Get out of yourself. Get out of your wickedness. Get out of your short-sightedness. Get out of your lack of faith and vision. I still want to bless you. And somehow, God blesses us anyhow. Even when we are hard-headed, stubborn, disobedient, hard to get along with, holier than thou, knows in there, but God is so determined to bless you that he blesses you anyhow. He may have to chastise you later, but I'm going to bless you anyhow. I may have to get your undivided attention at a later time, but right now I'm going to bless you Anyhow, don't you remember when Jesus walked up on the porch by the pool of Bethesda? The Bible says there were many sick and diseased people there. And he met a man that had an infirmity for 38 years. Jesus says, man, I'm ready to bless you. I want to deliver you. I don't want to half do it. I didn't come to heal you. I want to know, do you want to be made whole? I see favor on your life. I see miracles on your family. I see prosperity on unborn generations. Do you want to be made whole? The man was so wrapped up in yesterday's failures. All he could talk about was yesterday. Even the Beatles believe in yesterday. You don't need to put too much faith in yesterday. That is why your windshield should be bigger than your rearview mirror. Because if you got a great big rearview mirror, you can't get where you're going for looking where you've been. You can't forget about failures of the past. You can't let go of battles of the past. You can't forget your feelings being hurt in the past. Outgrow your disagreements, outgrow your stumbling blocks, outgrow your hurt feelings, grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, launch out into the deep. Jesus said to the man, man, I'm ready. I left heaven to bless your life. Don't worry about the angels. The angels move at my command. The angels are not coming today. Jesus is here today. Jesus is here to minister to you. Jesus
Jesus is here to lift your bowed down head. Jesus is here to put grace in your spirit. Jesus is here for rivers of living water to flow out of your belly. Stop looking for your old paths, old friends, old habits. Let God do a new thing in your life. New year, new month, new day, new thing. Oh, let God do a new thing in your life. But the man never said, yes, Lord. The man never said, I'm willing. The man never said, I surrender. He kept on talking about yesterday. Kept on talking about people getting in my way. It was my mama, my uncle, my auntie. It was cousin him. Jesus said, I'm sick of that. Take up your bed and walk. I know you ain't right yet, but I'm going to bless you anyhow. I know you're not surrendered yet. But this is your day to be blessed. I know you're not saved yet, but this is your day to be healed. I'll catch up with you later. I'm going to start the blessing now. I'll finish it on the next round. Take up your bed and walk. Say yes. The man didn't realize Jesus had set him up. He walked straight through the middle of town, carrying a pallet on his back. He was breaking the law, attracting attention. Self-righteous people began to get in his face and say, man, you must be crazy. Don't you know you don't carry your bed on the Sabbath? They never would let him testify. They never would let him say, I've been messed up for 38 years. I haven't been able to walk, haven't been able to carry anything. I apologize if it's hurting your feelings, but I just got a touch from God. I just felt God's presence. Well, man, who told you to take up your bed? I'm glad Jesus will bless you. Won't even give you his business card. He'll bless you. Won't even ask you to be his member. Jesus didn't even tell the man what his name was, but just be blessed. I'm not trying to get your number yet. Be blessed. I'm not trying to get your email. Be blessed. I'm not trying to get in your business. Be blessed. Sometimes just be a blessing. Don't try to get entangled all in folks' business. Don't try to get involved all up in their situation. Just be a blessing. Come on and look at three or four people and say, be blessed. Look at somebody else and say, be blessed. God's got a blessing just for you. I don't care what kind of past you've had, what kind of failures you've been through. Today is a day of blessing. Today is a day of victory. Today is a day of favor. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Be blessed. Be saved, be healed, be delivered, be set free, be happy, be prosperous, be an overcomer. God is in the blessing business. God is in the delivering business. This is your time to be blessed. Say yes. Come on and lift your hands and say, Lord, bless me. Anyhow, I've got some problems, but bless me. Anyhow, I've got some failures, but bless me. Anyhow, I need some work, but bless me. Anyhow, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, bless this man. Anyhow, met him a few hours later. I know you don't know my name, but let me tell you who I am. I am the Christ. And if you don't change, a worse thing than this will come upon you. I started the blessing, but I'm not through with you yet. When God begins to bless you, he's not going to stop until the day of fulfillment. He that has begun a good work in you will perform it 
until the day of Christ. Come on, help me with this thing. Look at somebody and tell them, God is not finished with you yet. God is not through blessing you. God is not through healing you. God is not through prospering you. Say yes. Say yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for initiating the process. Thank you for getting me started every round goes high and high every step draws me closer Jesus says to Simon I'm gonna bless you anyhow you're not ready but I gotta help you to get ready I'm gonna bless you anyhow move change your address change your attitude launch out into the deep and when he got out into the deep he threw out one net that net broke threw out another net that net broke threw out another net that net broke he had to call other fishermen come on and help me catch these fish come on and help me reel in this load and that's the way God wants to bless Philadelphia. That's the way God wants to move in this city. It ain't about my members. You got enough sinners in Philadelphia to fill up every church in town. God wants to break the nets at Mount Airy. And then you'll have to call Pastor Walla. So come on, Pastor Walla. Help us to bring in these souls. Come on. Call Holy Temple. Call neighborhood churches. Call Bishop Keith. Come on, help me. Let's bring in these souls. God needs a saving station. God needs a praying station. God needs a healing station. Station. Forget your denomination. Forget your label. Forget your color. Save somebody. Save some soul. Win some child. Heal some family. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Come on, help me praise God in here today. Come on, help me give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! The door is open. Sometimes we get so set. This is this is mine. This is my ministry. This is my organization. And people out on the world can look at the community of faith and see how jealous we are of each other how we compete with each other, how small-minded we are while millions of souls are perishing on the streets. God wants to bless us, but can we stand to be blessed? Once you grow to the point of understanding, it ain't my church. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Once you get kingdom-minded enough that you don't care who gets the credit, I just want souls to be delivered. I just want people to be healed. I just want lives to be changed. I don't have to get any recognition. I just want to bless somebody. I wish I had some help up in here today. Come on and help me worship God. I just want to bless somebody. This is Bishop J. Lewis Felton thanking you for joining us for the Mount Airy Kingdom Worship Experience. May you continue to partner with us as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. We love you in Jesus' name.